Good morning and welcome to another episode of the Star Wars Minute. It's your daily podcast in which we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one scheming minute at a time. I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. And I'm Tim Barnes from uh, uh, Tim Barnes Comedy. Uh, if you just type that in, you'll find something. <laughs> Will it be All you? Right. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> on the next <laughs> Star Wars Minute. <laughs> minute. There's also a, a football player named Tim Barnes who I'm, every time I, you know, I don't Google myself that often, mm-hmm. but when I do, I'm always trying to see when we're like battling on Google images as to mm. whose image pops up first. So, ah. um, yeah, yeah. Do you guys yeah. have any issues like that? I Any never Google ganger? myself, but the, but my name is Alex Robinson, which I assume is not an uncommon name exactly. So there are probably a lot of other ones, but I, it's not like I've yep. frequently been mistaken for any of the other ones. So it's possible I'm the most famous of the Alex Robinsons. Mm, could be you have a battle. Yeah. Um. Uh. Ironically, there's a there is another person with my name who is a um. Uh. I don't know if they're still at it, but they were a a, a fairly popular drag queen for a while. And yet, neither of us is is uses our real name as our primary name. I go as Pete the Retailer, mm-hmm. and they wow. were uh, they had a drag name that they they were under. And I, I, it's a I don't know. I guess yeah. we're leaving it wide open for another one to come in, swoop in, and be like, "Oh, mm. the wait." You know. Are you saying Pete the Retailer was the drag name? <laughs> it should be. That would be that would be <laughs> a weird loop that That's I was just like, "Huh." Very very specific drag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Price gun and all this stuff. Um, no, but I, uh, there's, uh, my, my, I'm regretting years ago, I had the opportunity to buy my last name as a, as a .com and mm. it was like, you know, 300 bucks. And I was like, 300 bucks, who are they kidding? And now it's, you know, thousands and thousands because there's a, there's a coffee company, coffee making mm. company and a jeans company and a crib making company, all that share my last name. So I was like, oh, I should have totally bought that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Anyhow. Well. <clears throat> regrets we all live with them <laughs> exactly but today we're going to live with minute 43 of the last jedi mm. minute 43 starts with finn telling poe that he likes where his head is and it ends a minute later with poe telling creepio that nosy holdo doesn't need to know mm. <laughs> well technically i like where your head is that's not grammatically correct right <laughs> ending it with is I like where your head is at. Is that what you're saying it should be? Well, I was going to say, I like, your head is where I like. <laughs> that's oh, how it should, I think, grammatically. A more, <laughs> that's a little like, uh, yeah, that's a different movie. <laughs> that um, that also seems like you're translating it from a different language. Like, yeah, you know. I, guess it's, I guess it's bad English into proper English. <laughs> oh, well, I but I don't think that's what he's trying to convey here. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, um, yes. He's not, he's not like, hmm, uh, yes, like the placement of your head upon your shoulders is pleasing to me. <laughs> um, and yet, no. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it's, a, it, it, you know, it works. You know what he's saying enough that it, it works mm-hmm. here. Oh, yeah. Um, um, 3PO should have corrected. 3PO was right there, so he should have he corrected them at that point. <laughs> right. Just leaned in and whispered, like, he means he likes where your head is. <laughs> No, do wait, people, that's wait, what he says. Now that you mentioned 3PO, do people scold C-3PO at all in this trilogy? That's something I realized that maybe I miss, is people kind of pushing C-3PO aside <laughs> at times. I guess uh, they do. Earlier, in the, he doesn't do very much. Uh, probably in the, in the next movie, he prob- they probably do, yeah, because he, yeah. he's more he's, the adventure. He's the star, kind of. The Earlier Skywalker. in this movie, Princess, sorry, General Leia, to me she's royalty, yeah. but she, she told <laughs> C-3PO to wipe that. <laughs> nervous look off your face yeah. oh yes, yes yeah yes, she's yes, a little okay. curt with him a couple of times but he's he, yeah. again he's not that prominent in yeah. this one yeah and it's weird that he still gets like he still gets um flustered about it even though they've been working together for like 40 <laughs> years now he still <laughs> takes it personally when she's when she's well, that, quick with him that's his yeah. you know protocol he's supposed to he's mm-hmm. like oh i let me show the right amount of 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 bristle to that we all have so our she knows that she successfully you know Heard talked him. Uh, to me in a way that you know she she right. he's doing it to be polite you know yeah. what i mean he was like oh yes you 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 got me <laughs> like because he he realized that if he didn't do that she would get even crueler and crueler so he's like i better yeah. i better cringe when she says the, the easy stuff because you know he, she gets really dark quick yeah 
Um, um so go ahead. Um we do get a moment of uh it's an interesting it, it seems like it's almost playing beginning a new dynamic that we don't really uh, follow up on as far as I can tell, but we get a a moment where where Finn is talking over Rose and like interrupts her to step in front of her and it's like are they are they going to turn that into a thing are they going to play with that but they don't really yeah yeah i don't get what i don't i don't get it yeah, yeah there's a lot going on dialogue wise if it, it feels oddly aaron sorkinish the way that they're kind of explaining <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's like very ping pongy back and forth and it's like energetically it's like what is happening here <laughs> right now <laughs> and um I guess you have to you have to explain it to Poe. I I, I I guess like cutting to Poe is like oh I guess you have to explain it to him to just do this. Yeah, thing. you mean you mean you mean the characters like to to move the story forward or yeah to, the yeah it's just in like the story you have to yeah do? why uh, yeah I just have sort of a lingering question of like why why are we in this room why I don't know it's just <laughs> <laughs> well that's also Leia's that's Leia's hospital room right yeah 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 that's yeah. what's especially weird about it that they're having this conversation while the <laughs> general is laying unconscious on the like. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it just seems yeah. weird. And if, isn't it just sort of revealed that she's right there too? Yeah, like you don't sure. see it immediately. He just kind of walks up. Until yeah. Pope puts his coffee it? cup down on her on her forehead. And, oh, sorry. Like, hey, <laughs> watch it, you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Luckily, the the doctor's office has a uh, tactical holograph display well, for for such. That's <laughs> what I was gonna. Address. I was gonna say. I was gonna figure. Out, like, is. In the Star Wars universe, is this, this kind of hologram? Is that the equivalent of like a PowerPoint deck? Like, did they did they take time to be like, okay, here's our plan. We're gonna stop. We're gonna go back to my place. We're gonna we're gonna put this PowerPoint together, you know, <laughs> of how how we're gonna blow up this sh where the where the thing is. We could draw a little. It won't really look like this, but we'll just put a little kind of like triangle, like a flux yeah. capacitor thing in there mm -hmm. that we can get to that the, um, and we'll we'll put it all together so we can present it to Poe. Like, did they take that time to do that, or is there just kind of a like a generic kind of like, yep, show me ship, show me this? Yeah, they just happen to have the technical blueprints of the supremacy on board, <laughs> on board <laughs> the, the rebel ship, <laughs> ship which they didn't even acknowledge existed, uh, like in the last movie. Now is uh, right. yeah, luckily they happen to have one, but um, yeah, yeah did, I imagine they made three PO do it. That's something Could I imagine be. you'd you'd probably tell three PO to do is like, and is he like watching? Is he like like? playing is this like musical accompaniment where like he's just like as they he's controlling the hologram and i was like okay mm -hmm. so we're gonna sneak into the to the ship and he's like okay and he brings up the ship you know like yes. da -da -da, ship yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna go find the reactor okay find the reactor room sneak through their shields oh, shields okay yeah he's not really hitting buttons because he's a robot but yeah <laughs> this is me <laughs> playing a c3po's keyboard as he's doing like you know danger music <laughs> dun 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's like that moment I, when I see bands. My favorite thing is watching the. There's always like a moment where the bass player is nodding at the drummer because they they got like some secret going on. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> it's totally so the, later on three PO three PO and Finn yeah. were like high five. <laughs> you totally, yeah. you totally, totally nailed it. <laughs> oh, and then C three PO should have put in a, a picture of like his wife in a bikini. Oh, sorry, I don't know how that. I, I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, very funny, three PO. Yeah, <laughs> you're not convinced. <laughs> Wait, who whose wife are we talking about here? Who's got a wife? Three <laughs> PO. I, I love the his idea. Wife, of C3PO his wife, wife are too. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, C three PO's wife, uh, I'm very pleased that the there was a droid we saw earlier in the movie, which uh, at the time I did not have any reference material for, it, but since then I've of course picked up. The Last Jedi Visual Dictionary. So <laughs> mm -hmm. now I, I am now able to tell you that the white medical droid tending to Aleia is the MD fifteen C. Yeah, medical droid. And boy, so two one B, out of here. MD fifteen C is distracting to me. It's almost like a yeah, it's poof. a very different kind of droid. Yeah, and and just kind of like like in the background the whole time I'm like, what's up with the droid? Where's the what? <laughs> Let me see the droid again. Like, and they're they're talking about their plan. I'm like, no, I, I got it the first time. Let me see the droid. <laughs> the camera should have just panned over, and you just saw the droid doing stuff while they were talking. You know, because right. yeah. you could still follow what they're saying. But like, if I was in that room, I'd be like listening, but I'd be watching the droid the whole time. So yeah. there's no reason the yeah. camera should be doing the same thing. 
Well, that's an interesting question, though. Is are medical droids are they able to listen to other conversations? Mm. Is that medical droid not hearing them talk over everything? Oh, that's a good Would that is medical like, droid be able to tell? <laughs> is it like doctor confidentiality where you can't, yeah. you can't say anything? But, Maybe that's but, why they had it in Leia's room because they knew that way no one could tell because it was doctor. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think, they didn't, I think the opposite because it's not, you know, Leia's the, the MD-15C's patient. Nobody else is. So right. MD-15C is totally listening to all this. And then as soon as Leia wakes up, he's like, listen. You don't believe what they're planning. You got to get up there and like stun this guy and get rid of him because like who knows? It's a crazy plan. It's not going to work. They're going to like you yeah. should have seen the PowerPoint. Oh my god, it was ridiculous. <laughs> they should have had the doctor like not listening at all to what's going into yeah. the conspiracy around me. Just cleaning up. Stitches. Yeah. <laughs> la 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 mutiny. <clears throat> There's kind of a weird moment in the scene where where Poe says like, "And how did you guys meet?" Or something like that. Yeah. And then they, it's like two close ups of, and it's see, another thing where it seems to be teasing a romance. And overall, in this trilogy, it feels like every potential romance is teased in some way, <laughs> but never gets any resolution. Hmm. Like the, the last time. Uh, that I, I watched The Rise of Skywalker, uh, mainly focusing on my obsession with Ochi. Uh, <laughs> by the end of it, I was just kind of flabbergasted by the fact like, oh, this series ends with a platonic hug between friends. There is no, uh, yeah. no one hooks up <laughs> in this <laughs> in this trilogy. There, I have no concept of who's getting married to who, no concept of, uh, of yeah. anything. Yeah, they don't really, I mean, I guess that was part of the, like, hey, we're wrapping up the Skywalker saga. Like, you know, they didn't leave any loose ends for people to be like, oh, like, you know, let's speculate on, you know, down, like that we had Han and Leia being like, well, they got together. And then you can imagine that the next movies will probably feature, you know, their kids or something. Yeah. And, uh, but there's no, I don't think we have that. Here. About the only direction is Finn going to theoretically be trained by Rey and how to be a Jedi because he has <laughs> right? Jedi powers. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be the next thing. And, and when you guys first watched this movie, did you get the sense that maybe there could be something between these two characters? Oh, totally. Between uh, Poe, between and, Finn and um, Finn and, and Rose. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it ends with them kissing, so right. definitely yeah. feel like they were leaning towards that. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it and it also weirdly seemed almost like a structural kind of you know again who knows what what who knows what came from what minds, but it it almost did seem like a top-down reaction to the storm pilot you know the the shipping of of uh, finn and poe from the first one where disney was like Let, yeah. let's put water on that throw give give uh, give finn a girlfriend in this one they're like what all right yeah. well what are they gonna do yeah. i don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah have them go to a casino yeah <clears throat> but because uh, yeah and, and i know this is jumping ahead but there's a moment between poe and ray at the end of this movie where it also seems like oh they think they go out of their way to say i'm poe and she's just like, I know, or whatever. And uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, And totally. to me, that's like a moment of like, oh, is there something going on there? Like every every time two well, people of an opposite gender yeah. meet in this franchise, I'm like, oh, what's, what's <laughs> going on? Uh, <laughs> Can somebody just well, do it already? What's going on here? <laughs> you stood up in the theater and shouted out. I think in that case, it was just because they literally, this is two movies in, at the end of two movies, and they had never been on screen together at any point. So they're almost like that to say, like, okay, we've met each other now, everyone. You can yeah. kind of, uh, yeah. So um, one last thing about the medical droid. Uh, according to the visual dictionary, it its face looks like basically almost like a fencing mask. Oh, yeah. Like a, uh, like a picture, like a stormtrooper version of a fencing mask, just like a, and it has two tiny little beady lights for eyes. Ooh, but it's kind of thick, right? Like thick with two C's. Destroyed. <laughs> Am I making that up? Is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah, there, you... yeah, it's, yeah. It's sort of a, yeah. it's got a, got. A... Well, that's Leia. I, think I can see a thing. Yeah, you're, you're showing, showing us Leia, Leia which, which is also, you know. <laughs> Um, but it's listed as a non-threatening face. Mm. And I was like, if I woke yeah. up from a coma and I saw that creepy featureless white <laughs> orb look staring down at me, I'd be like, I've clearly died and gone to robot hell. So, yeah, <laughs> they kind of remind me of those droids in, um, Revenge of the Sith that, that birth, mm. uh, oh, right. the canteen, the yeah. Croontan B machine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, really, medical droids, medical dro- imperial officers, medical droids, and uh, um, and then the, the separate Accounts. category of those 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 crux, those characters that are super important to the plot, but we don't really talk to. Like you said, Ochi and Hawks and uh, yeah. Sifidius, um, and and <laughs> Boshek and and all these guys. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I I uh, I'm distracted by that by that droid. Uh, um, one thing I did like about their hollow, their little PowerPoint presentation was mm. the uh, the cartoony Aratus sh- escaping. Going, pew, it like disappears <laughs> off screen and almost like a little Roadrunner, you know, yeah, kind of thing. Like, <laughs> <"Rip, rip, rip, laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, ma- yeah, maybe that's a go-to PowerPoint transition. Mm, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hyperspace. They they hit it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, backing up, you mentioned the. Uh, um, the first time you saw this movie and whether whether or not you thought they were going to hook up what yeah. what was your uh what was your deal the first time you saw it were you in new york yet or did you... i was i was in oh do i have a story to tell you guys Please. i was in new york i have a uh what i consider it's a, personally i consider this to be a famous feud with um uh it's i have such a feud with this movie theater chain that i've forgotten the name of it mm. at the moment it is, uh, you know, the big one where there's a bunch of space and, you know, you can order a burger while you watch it. What's this called? Mm. Alamo? Alamo? Alamo. Uh-oh. I saw it at the Alamo Draft House in mm. Brooklyn. And um, premiere night, um, bought tickets in advance. And you go to the Alamo Draft House, you're like spending money on beer, you're spending money on, on burgers and all kinds of stuff. But the one flaw of the Alamo Draft House is that they don't sell red vines. And red vines, to me, are the ultimate movie candy. Mm-hmm. And well, You're on the East Coast now. You're supposed to eat Twizzlers. Yeah. Like no, 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 no. Red vines are <laughs> superior to Twizzlers, and they don't even sell Twizzlers. I even gave them That's the... true, they don't. I was like, when I go there, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll buy Twizzlers. They don't sell it. They sell, I think you can get, like, gummy worms or something that come in, like, a like uh, a rice box that you would get for like Chinese takeout or something, but they mm-hmm. don't sell Twizzlers or Red Vines. My two favorite, you know, Red Vines first movie style candy. So I go to the, uh, what Wait, you said Red like Vines are your first favorite and then Twizzlers yes. are your second? Yeah, yeah. They're a close a supplement huh. for Red Vines. If you if the Red Vines aren't available, I'll of course start eating Twizzlers. But so Twizzlers if there's all the other of... candy in the world and Twizzlers, you would pick Twizzlers. Yes, yes. As not, a, red as vines. A, not red vines, just Twizzlers and every other candy. You'd pick red Twizzlers next. Like if yes. red vines, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, what, else, what else could you compare to? Uh, I, I to fully it? concur. I, of course, you know, being originally from the East Coast, I, I flip-flop that. I go Twizzlers <laughs> first, but I've come to appreciate red vines, whereas first I was... Yeah. I was uh, these are like imitation Twizzlers. Get this crap out of here. But now I'm like, oh, you know what? All right. It's a... It's a <laughs> but, but it's a... Yeah, a completely uh, palatable substitute. Yeah, and I, nothing against you, but as we we've clarified, Alamo Draft House, to my knowledge, yeah. to this day, does not sell either of those. No. So I went to the Target that's in the same building, mm-hmm. got myself some twiz- some some red vines, and admittedly, maybe I was flaunting the fact that I brought outside candy. <laughs> I'm sitting on the in the front row. I've got my girlfriend. I invited a friend to to go with us. I paid for all the t- like the amount of money I'm spending overall. I think is like should allow me to bring in something that is movie candy that a movie theater and you would buy to, that, yeah, that it. I would buy if, if they had it right or anything similar to it um, so I had you know I've got my popcorn I've got my beer I've got you know all this stuff I got a burger but I, I just have the red vines out on my lap and I'm open openly eating it and uh, right before you know curtain call couple minutes before you see the opening crawl an employee it's not the employee's fault uh kind of openly sort of scolds me for having the outside candy and it mm. it kind of ruined a lot of my mood I, I still ate my red vines throughout the movie i had it like in a side pocket i wasn't openly eating it but it kind of ruined my mood to the extent that i could not tell what my actual opinion of the Last Jedi was the first time I saw it because the whole time I was thinking oh, about sucks. this mm. Red Vines fiasco. Um, so if anyone works at Alamo Draft House, um, if anyone has had a similar experience, um, I'm I'm here with you, and I I just want you to know that we are not alone, and uh, 
we will get through this. Alamo, you should allow people to eat red vines in your theater. Why? Well, I, I think they just went to they just went into bankruptcy and then were bought. <laughs> no, seriously, not not because of that, but I think they <laughs> wasn't it. They just literally have gone changed hands and they're probably going to be a little bit more corporate right now so there might be a, a, a good chance that they'll have some of that kind of standard candy soon awesome. so i i will take this as a victory i think that i am the reason i think and not just me but other people who have always wanted to eat red vines at alamo draft house are the reason they went through this whole bankruptcy thing and right uh you know this is the one time that i can think of that you know corporate uh a corporate takeover is 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 good for the people yeah yeah, I, I hadn't uh, I hadn't even thought of it until just now. I was like, oh yeah, wait a minute, that is the perfect thing that's missing from Alamo. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I um, yeah. also saw it there opening weekend, same same place. Oh, so maybe we could have been mm, in the same theater. I, I could be. I don't remember anybody getting thrown out for eating red vines though. So I, I wasn't thrown out. Oh, yeah. I was just told oh, in yeah. a in a way that was almost like. You know how you want to set an example to the class right. when a student gets in trouble or something? It was kind of that kind of <laughs> kind of tone, and I I didn't appreciate it. I was like, I spent you know over a hundred dollars, like more than more than you know on red vines. You were like you had like a like a jacket <laughs> woven out of red vines. Yeah, I got one of those red vines buckets. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that was a little much. <laughs> was a little much. But um, yeah, I overall really enjoyed. There were there was a lot that first time I watched it about the movie that was like kind of jarring in an exciting way. Um, and, um, but yeah, I was left kind of like, I don't know what I just watched was the general feeling. Mm. And it was part of the, Hello there. uh, this example of like, I feel like WandaVision is, the conversation is similar to this. And, um, this, the Star Wars trilogy is kind of, uh, an example of what happens when there's an, an amount of time between, movies or in WandaVision somehow within weeks where you kind of go out of control with theories and uh, uh, um, The Force Awakens was the perfect J.J. Abrams mystery box where you're theoretically just going all over the place mm -hmm. and um, you kind of that you have enough time to be like you just kind of have your own idea of the story <laughs> of the next movie yeah and so then there's a st sort of a balancing act afterwards um can you even and there's so much yeah can you even imagine if we had had the the traditional three years in between movies oh. like how, this is just but you know it's like there's two years there's one star wars movie in between and it's like one year and then a, a different star wars movie and then in, like the follow-up to that is just you know, happening two years after yeah the original yeah. so imagine if there's just three years of no star wars in between each of these we would have gone nuts with with <laughs> fan theories and everybody would have been more disappointed that all the stuff that they cooked up hadn't happened like all their snoke theories would have been Ridiculous. If I was the king, if I was the king, all three sequels, not Solo or Rogue One, but the three sequels would have been shot as one big unit. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Because then mean, by the time it's coming out, they can't, they're like, well, that's the, the way the story is. We can't now suddenly say, oh, boy, they didn't really like yeah. that character. Let's, right. let's well, take that is, that, so. I have this, this, this thought that Star Wars really just needs a pope. Like, that's kind of the function that. Yeah. George Lucas had mm. and I do not for one bit believe that George Lucas ever had an overarching plan for in, any of the trilogies any of the, any of no. the movies at all it's a basic um, kind of tent posts tent poles of like okay we're gonna have to get to this point but like the, yeah. the details are never yeah yeah but because there was a figure like him that you could be like oh this is some sort of cohesive vision mm -hmm. then there there's wiggle room in your ability to to communicate with the franchise. And uh, this is the first time with a franchise like this where it's like the level of ownership that fans felt was skyrocketing. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, it's actually my only experience of feeling that level of ownership to a franchise just because of the fact that there is no sort of central storytelling figure behind the scenes that you, you you know if you didn't like the prequels um there you know are a lot of reasons to have debates and arguments but there there was this kind of feeling of at least there is a central figure that you can place that blame on mm -hmm. whereas um when it is sort of basically a, a corporation you're kind of uh 
I don't know. It's different. Does that kind of make sense, or does that? Do you guys have similar thoughts about what makes this trilogy different? Uh, I do think that Lucas was famously very independent-minded, and the fact that he was totally in control of everything. I think you know, for better or for worse, that's kind of what how it was. So, <clears throat> yeah. Whereas but I feel like he was also definitely reacting to yeah, reaction. he was definitely reacting, but I, yeah. you know. oh, only each time. So it's an interesting. You know, it's why the right. Phantom Menace is the purest kind of expression of his love. Yeah. <laughs> and the Phantom Menace is my favorite prequel movie. Um, Same. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but, and I do think that the sequels have suffered from not having a uh, creative, uh, like, person who, uh, and I know Kathleen Kennedy has produced other movies, but I don't think of her as someone who is, like, the story, she's not a storyteller. So mm-hmm. I feel like that in that sense, it needs someone who's at least, um, uh, you know, and there's stuff like in the rise of Skywalker, there's those jetpack wearing stormtroopers because they, Disney came to them and said, we want to sell these stormtroopers. <laughs> so you're going to put this scene in the movie that wouldn't have happened under, I mean, Lucas put in yeah. his own stuff because right. he wanted to sell toys, but at least it was part of like the, the guy who was doing the product placement at least was, yeah. It was Someone walked baby. into an office and said, "They fly now." Yeah, right. And it uh, feels like the, the it, it feels like they were. I think anyway. I have a lot of time to talk about the, the my theories about these films. So, <laughs> but but what you're saying of whether or not it should have been shot all at once? Yeah. I, I, in my mind, there are two examples like Lord of the Rings, fantastic. But then I always remember that uh, the Matrix sequels were shot together. Right. And those movies actually came out six months apart. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's not, and uh, that was Back to the Future a, 2 and 3 also shot. Uh, oh, yeah. Shot yeah. back to back. Um, right. and, but, but the Matrix sequels are kind of the perfect, in my mind, example of, of like sort of the pitfalls of that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's no guarantee movie, that it's going to be good. Yeah, right. yeah. And that second movie literally right. ends with the words to be concluded, which is. Uh, uh, I don't know, a strange thing to me for some reason. <laughs> that, <laughs> But I guess at least it would it would eliminate things like, okay, well, we have these two main lead characters who don't have anything else to do. Like, you, yeah. would, you would, by the time you got to the end, you'd be like, okay, you know what? We realized these guys should just be one character or, I don't know, there would just be ways to improve the overall structure of it. Like, and like you said, not a, not a foolproof method of success. But, uh, and also it would have been nice to see all three of the old guys yeah, more prominently true. throughout the movies, but uh, you know, that is what it is. So, um, mm. speaking of the old people, Princess Leia, not in a back to suit. How come she doesn't have to wear that uh, <laughs> that that bubble suit that uh, that that uh, Finn got? I guess he had the only one, and he just wrecked it by running around. And then... <laughs> that's like, well, we could have we could have healed her immediately if we had that back to suit, but somebody <laughs> ran off and went to the. Um, spilled the fluid all over the place and we got none left <laughs> running out of back to fluid <laughs> slow the ship down right we have to send somebody on a hyperspace adventure to go get back to fluid to come back no um i i'm assuming it's because her injuries were not really um um kind of physical in oh, nature like they were they're not lacerations right um yeah. it's like you know like luke with the wampa or or, or yeah. finn with kylo ren they're just kind of decompression and right. uh Force exhaustion yeah. and what have you. So, force exhaustion. Force exhaustion. <laughs> Believe is that, me, is that a prescribed it. ailment? Yeah, now? yeah. Are you experiencing force <laughs> fatigue? <laughs> Side effects may include blue lightning, telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, healing snakes. <laughs> Snokes. Uh, well, is there anything else for minute forty-three? Um, no. Well, so wait. So some you're, stuff you're, that'll carry over. Yeah. Well, there is the the line. Uh, it's a need to know plan, and she doesn't. Yeah, that's a yeah. That's a pretty fun fun line that Poe. So has. yeah, what are C three PO's uh, obligations, ethical obligations in that regard? Well, yeah, that's all. If, I mean, I, I I don't know if I is it should it have been in this. I had a note for it for tomorrow that C three PO saying you know well Holdo won't go for it. That's in right. this minute, and so that oh, kind of yeah. that. In the next a, minute, he says, "Well, that's not what I meant." So that's so maybe maybe that's right, why right, I'm right. For All right, so let's let's table it for tomorrow. We'll yeah. we'll talk about C three PO and and his role in this, the ethics of three PO. Mm. 
Uh, all right. Uh, well, thanks, everyone, for listening to the show. And if you like listening to me and Pete talk, I have great news for you. We both have podcasts that we do on the side. I do a podcast, The Godfather Minute, with my brother. We're going through The Godfather Part 2, one minute at a time. And uh, Pete and his uh, friends over at ABC DTOS are going through Star Trek, the original series, one episode at a time. In alphabetical order. Because In alphabetical why not? order. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen one of those videos where they do all the words in a mm, yeah. movie in alphabetical order? We should just so, do that. Yeah. We'll switch. We'll, that's the next project. We'll cover Star Wars words. <laughs> um, and Tim, what is your uh, Star Wars podcast again? Oh, it's called Yub Nub, which yep. um, there is another podcast uh, called Yub Nub that I think they've only had like four episodes and stopped recording years ago. Mm. Uh, but if you look for the, the Yub Nub that has two... Uh, black people in the cover art. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the one I'm in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, anyway, so um, <laughs> yes, people should ch- check that out and uh, should check us out tomorrow with another brand new Star Wars. Star Minute. Wars. Minute. Minute.